when I used to go to these radio stations, they'd be like, yeah, man, they're trying, they trying to get us to stop playing your record and sabotage your record not to play your music. I'm just like, why? I'm a baller, say high roller, baby, 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 baby. baby. shot caller. Growing up in St. Louis, it was always trials and tribulations. I made my mother rest in paradise, but, and my father, he's still here, but you know, they, it, they wasn't a uh, huggy, huggy, hug you all the time, kiss you all the time type of parents. So um, it, 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 it was cool. They showed they love tough love. My dad's a street dude, so he was, he was into the streets. He was doing what they do in the streets. He had nice cars, you know what I mean? He, I was about six. He had like two Rolls Royces when I was a kid. You know, you get to eat on the back in the tray, the wood grain and stuff. So my daddy was cool. Everybody likes my, my um, father. And so I, I tend to, you know, gravitate towards him because I wanted to be like that. I thought he was cool. Everybody thought he was cool. But my, I was real close to my mother as well. I'm Chingy's mom, and I am very excited and very happy right now. This is, I guess, about three or four hours away from this album being released July 15th. Come a long way, struggled hard, worked hard, went to school, graduated, still stuck to this business, and you see what comes You see up what happened. When you come up around that, like I say, my father was in the street, my brothers, my cousins, my uncles, everybody was in the street on both sides of my family. So when you come up around that, it's easy to, to gravitate towards that. But it's one thing that kept me on another page, and that was music. Easy e actually made me want to start rapping, but I, I was into music. Michael Jackson got me into entertainment, so I knew entertainment and music was something I wanted to do, but after seeing Easy e I was like, yeah, I want to I, I do what he doing. <laughs> I started my first rap group when I was 12 years old. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Misfit. M-I-C. Yeah, and we was in Without Warning with Without my homie Warning. Chingy. Without Warning was um, my group. It consisted of me and two of my homeboys, Misfit and MGD. That led up to us putting out local CDs at 15, 16. Um, after that, though, I actually parted from that rap group without warning because, you know, people just weren't on the same page. It just, it just wasn't going good as a group. A homeboy of mine's named M.O.D., we did a couple songs together and we thought we sounded good together. And so we was just like, Let's just make a group out of it. And so we made a group out of it called Three Strikes. M.O.D. is Ali from the Lunatics' younger brother. Nelly uh, went, on, he was, went on this tour. They needed an opening act. And we had good music. We got to open up on their shows, on the, on the little run that they did. So this is, this is pretty big, because Nell was like the biggest star in probably the United States at the time. This is when Country Graham and all that stuff came out. He was huge. We was over at the time, Nelly's road manager house, Yella. Nelly came in there. And so he came in there, he was like, um, he said, you know what, I, uh, I'll sign you. But he, wouldn't, he didn't want to sign them, he wouldn't sign them. And so I was like, man, uh, you know, we're a group. So I ain't, I ain't want to just bail out on them or, or leave them or nothing. But everybody wasn't as serious as I was. And I was very serious about doing what I was doing and about um, making it in the industry and becoming a name. And as soon as I got out of the group, it happened for me. The new artist of the year 2004 goes to Chingy! <laughs> Who I'm gonna say discovered me was Chaka Zulu um, from Disturbing the Peace, Ludacris's manager and, and co-owner of Disturbing the Peace. First artist on Disturbing the Peace Yep. Slash Capital, man. How'd you hook up with Ludacris, man? Actually, my um, producers, the track stars, uh, we was back in St. Louis, and Shaka Zulu had just started managing them. Zoe, um, who's part of the track stars, already had a relationship 
with Chaka. We thought we had some, so Zo hit him up and was like, hey man, I'm working with um, this guy, this young guy named Chingy, and we got a demo we're working on. We want you to check it out. And so that's kind of how I met Chaka through Zo. Where we are right now, we in the apartment complex, condo, whatever, where me and the track stars recorded the Jackpot album. Right there, one call away, um, Holiday Inn. It was all recorded right here in this little apartment. I believe in this room, right here. I think that was the living room. We slept in there. On, on, I was on this futon, Sham was on the floor, eating Emo's pizza all the time. Me and Sham have been and laid down the gang of tracks, the drums, and I'd have been and did my parts on the verses, and then Zoe come back and he'll lay the keys and the piano and stuff down, and um, yeah, it all happened right here. We was already working on the Jackpot album, finishing it up, actually. And uh, we put together these six songs on the demo, and right there was on the demo CD, but it was just, it was the beat, the hook, and the first verse. And I had, now keep in mind, this is when I was 22. I wrote that when I was 16. And we sent it off to a couple of record companies. But Chaka kind of got back to him quick and was like, hey, tell Chingy to finish that song right there. Tell him to finish it. Put the second verse on there and um, y'all get it mixed and mastered. See, when I heard Dude, that record was ready to go. So when we heard the record, we got him in mode to record. He got in the studio work, he put the project out. And next thing you know, December 14th, I had my record deal with Disturbing the Peace slash Capital Records. And in 2003, right there, was the number one song in the country. It's these three girls that used to come to this club called The Monastery on the east side of St. Louis. And they used to always do that dance. They used to always do that dance. And there'd be just them three girls on the floor doing their dance. People be looking at them like, what are they doing? Like, I remember this. My name is Juanitra Allen, and I was the girl in the video in the diner and doing a chicken head dance. And that's where that dance came from. And Nelly kind of made it popular, I kind of made it famous. Gateway City's hip hop scene, which already gave us Nelly and the Lunatics, now has produced the hottest new name in hip hop. You'd have to say that is, of course, Chingy, as well as a dance sensation that is quite simply sweeping the nation. <laughs> What you doing right there? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Right there being a dance track and along with that dance just made Right There even more bigger. And then the way I talked, you know what I'm saying? See, that's and that's how we got this shirt right now. There people think that's country, I guess, and different. So they that's what make the people like that song. And so I was just glad that I was doing what I always wanted to do on another level what we call professionally and, you know, and be acknowledged for it. You're nominated for Breakthrough Artist of Breakthrough the Year. Artist. What does that mean to you? It means a lot to me, man, because, you know, I ain't been nominated for that many awards, you know right. what I'm saying? So hopefully I walk home with this. You know, it's going to be the first of many, many years to come for you because I think you're dropping it like it's hot. They had came to us in a, at the end mix and mastering stages of the project and was like, do y'all got a song for, like, the ladies, something's a little slower for the ladies. He's like, oh yeah, we got this one song, one call away, but whatever. We didn't, we didn't even really care about the record, and it happens to be one of my biggest records. And so they heard it, they was like, y'all was keeping this away from us? This record is dope. Keisha Knight Pulliam, Rudy, from the Cosby Show, in the video, beautiful. It, I think that was um, one of the first times people seen her so grown up as this beautiful young lady. Crush on her right when she put on the Cosby show. I know everybody probably when they see her, they say that, but I gotta say it because this is really my first time getting to know her. We run into each other all the time. This is the most he's ever spoken to me True. in the months I've known him. Yeah, man, she just take my breath away. I can't say nothing. Oh, you're a hot ass man. Yeah. Of course people thought we was dating. <laughs> we weren't dating. She's just cool. But uh, yeah, One Call Away was one of my biggest records. His video, One Call Away, featuring Jason. We have a debut on the countdown on January 21st. And for all you faithful viewers, we're going to play it one last time. But he's been on for 64 days. Now that's a record. Is that a record? That has to be a record. I don't ever remember 64 days. Hey, what you doing?
sudden chillin' at the Holiday Inn. Me and my peeps, don't you bring forward your friends? Well, we don't feel on each other, answer on some heat and one thing leading to another. Let the party begin. Well, we don't when I um, met, first met Chris Ludacris, we was in Atlanta. I believe he was finna record Holiday Inn. And um, me and the track stars was there, but Chris didn't talk to us. <laughs> yeah, he didn't talk to us. He didn't speak. <laughs> so, you know, you know, we thought that was strange. You know, we like, hey, how we science and stir people? But dude don't even speak, he don't even say nothing to us or nothing like that, me and the track stars. So we asked Shock about that. Shock was like, he'll, he'll come around. Don't even, don't pay him no attention. He'll come around. Things start progressing and everything. He, he, he did come around. He reminds me of a younger me. I say that all the time. He's just a real hard working individual. He stays in the studio. You know, he's a workaholic just like myself, and that's what we do. How that collaboration came by with Holiday Inn, actually, um, I wanted Snoop Dogg and Chris on the record. It was a big record. One of, one of the biggest records for me in like, a, in like the college environment, they love that record. And so, um, yeah, man, that's pretty cool. Now, you recently split with DTP, and so this right. is your first time doing an album without them. Tell us, you know, what made that happen or what... I'm, I'm started my own life. label, Slot A Lot Records. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur, too, you yeah. know, so... How that happened with me leaving Disturbing the Peace? I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't have my own lawyer, so I was using other people's lawyers. And so my, my mother got this lawyer, this guy from her, St. Louis, I don't even think he was an entertainment lawyer, but I, I'm still, I don't know the difference, entertainment lawyer, traffic lawyer, I, I don't know, but I think, he, I think that's what he dealt with, family stuff, but acted like he knew the music business. So he instantly says, disturbing the peace is stealing from me. So instantly I'm like, they are? Like, I'm like, dang, they stealing from me? Disturbing the peace, why they want to steal from me? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, I'm a kid. He get in touch with Shaka and them from disturbing the peace, and we set this meeting, this meeting here in St. Louis. So Shaka come, and we didn't really get nowhere. Only, only, only place we got was a bunch of people being in their feelings. To the point where I don't want to talk anymore. You know what I'm saying? For months and months, you continue to say, I want to talk. You got to be a man of your word. And so we eventually just stopped talking and contracts getting off Disturbing the Peace, signed to Capitol, all that stuff went on. Financially, he is still signed to Disturbing the Peace. We'll do what we have to do, but we don't want anybody representing the crew that's going to make false accusations like that or, you know, have that type of... Re we, we have no respect for this individual, basically. I still, to this day, I don't... I don't... I can't say they stole from me. I don't know what really happened. But I, I was a kid. I didn't know business. Yes. And his new CD is called Powerball and it's in stores right now. Right so now. Go get it. Go get it right now. <laughs> so Capitol barely promoted my second album, Powerballing. Um, I came out with Baller Baby was the first single. We came out with the remix with Lil Flip and um, a friend of mine at the time, Boozy, which both records were big. And um, that was it, though. We didn't come out with a second single, a third single, or nothing because the record company, and this at the time I wasn't with Disturbing the Peace. It was just me, Slot a Lot, and Capitol Records. The record company didn't listen to us. And so I ended up not even having a second single. And what was a great album didn't get promoted as being a great album. Still went platinum and over platinum, but the music wasn't put out there like I wanted to. And so that's, that's one of the situations where I would say, you know, they didn't, they didn't listen to me. They didn't listen to us, and so, you know, kind of went downhill. I'm tired of these guys listening to my ludicrous and Nelly. I'm tired of these guys taking shots at me and all these interviews and these songs, subliminal shots. I ain't with all this foolishness, you dig? So how things actually got heated between me and Nelly is from a situation where I was on promo tour and Ali called my phone saying he's going to blow my head off. This um, DJ from St. Louis, where he was a, trying to be a mixtape DJ, he wasn't a real DJ. His name was DJ Bishop. He made a mixtape, and it was basically Chingy and Nelly going against each other, where he had, and it was just a lot of my songs, a lot of Nelly songs, but he made it as if we was talking about each other. People in the street heard it, and then people started thinking that we had a problem. But where I knew that something was wrong was we had a show in, Arizona. A, a photographer came and got me and was like, man, come on, I want you to take a picture. And I was like, ah, he was like, I want you to take a picture with Nelly. I'm like, cool. And he went and got Nelly and Nelly walked up when he seen who he was taking a picture with. 
he looked and he just turned around and walked off. So that's when I knew, I was like, oh, okay, something, something up. But then when he came out with, it ain't another one, I'm listening to the song. And then the song is say, yeah, I like the way you do that right there. You just remember why you do that right there. <laughs> so I felt like he was trying to sub me. I was like, and then I kept asking people, is it this or this? And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, it is what it is. And so I, I made a little diss record. I've been discovered, boy. That's why you hating, boy. They like the way I do that right there. They relating, boy. My diss record was mainly about Ali. But this is where when the beef really, this is when it went up. My second album, Power Baller, came out. I shot Baller Baby in my neighborhood. I shot the video. A mutual friend that they knew and that I, that I knew came over to my neighborhood, just being cool, but he had a dirty ENT chain on. Some of the little homeboys from where I'm from told him, you know what's going on, so tuck that chain. You can keep it, but just tuck it. And so he's walking around with his chest out, he didn't tuck it. They took it. They took his chain and they sold it. It was Kiwan chain from the Lunatic. So I called Kiwan and I, I'm, I'm talking to Kiwan like, okay, this is what the situation, this is what happened. What do we say he shouldn't have been over there in the chain with his chest out? It wasn't his chain in the first place, but I don't care about that chain. So me and Kiwan, that's like my brother. And so when Kiwan said he didn't care about it, he shouldn't have been over there, I let it go. But that started something else because that night some guys came over to my neighborhood and it it got real like a lot of people don't notice that situation got a little serious and, and me and they were cool but then you couldn't talk to him <laughs> you couldn't talk to him he they was a little arrogant you know back then so I'm, I'm talking to him and he keep telling me i ain't listening to him and so i'm like this dude you're not listening i'm trying to talk i say you know what we're not getting nowhere, so we're talking the time. <laughs> so it was just funny, but you know, I just had three shows with Nail. It, you know, we had fun, so uh, but we cool. But back then, it was it was pretty crazy. <laughs> Every time I try to leave, something keeps pulling me back, me back, telling me I need you in my Lady, what's good? I, I came out with "Pulling Me Back" with Tyrese, produced by Jermaine Dupri was also one of my great number one chick records right there. I was in California for some, and I ran into Tyrese at, a, at this little event. And I was like, man, you know what? I got this perfect record that you can sing on, that you can um, you know, feature you, so I'm gonna send it to you. And so I sent it to him, and he did it, sent it back. We sent it to Jermaine Dupri, and it was simple. It went just like that. <laughs> my lifestyle, and that I ain't like that. I had a berry in the world, got your diamonds, got your pearls. So my third album, Hood Store, I feel wasn't I feel it wasn't promoted properly at all. But at this time, Capital started going down into a slump. They was they was firing a lot of people. They was finna get rid of the president, and I was getting caught in that. I was finna get caught in that. My third album did get caught in that. Now the album is called Hood Star. Hood Star, September 19th is coming out. You did September go get 19th. that. Go get that. September 19th. Capital stopped the promotion on it. Stopped the promotion on the whole third album, period. And I, I eventually came to think that they didn't know what to do with me. And how I got back with Disturbing the Peace. A mutual homeboy of, of mine's and theirs, we was on the elevator going up to the room. He was like, man, you know, it's shocking them here. And I, I was like, oh yeah, straight up. He was like, yeah, man, y'all should talk and Chris and everybody, y'all should talk. And I was like, cool, tell them it's all good. We was all staying in the same hotel and you know, we just all sat down and talked, talked about the whole situation, with, which, which was a misunderstanding, miscommunication and everything. So we talked about it, put it in the past and we, we just figured we move forward, you know what I'm saying? And reunite. And at that time, we just, we, we thought it was beneficial to go with the Starting the Peace Def Jam from the situation, what was going on over at Capitol. But looking back on it, I probably would have, if I could have did any different, I wouldn't have re-signed with Disturbing the Peace. I'd have just made amends and we'd have been cool and just kind of did my own thing still. Disturbing the Peace, we don't die, we multiply. It's a lot of members. You know, we got a lot of different artists coming out in the year 2008. They are working on a compilation album, I'm, I'm guessing, to introduce all the, the new acts and stuff. But I had a song 
that I wanted to be my first single titled Celebrity Chick. They liked the song so much, they wanted to use it for the first single for the DTP compilation album. It was cool, but that compilation album ended up not even coming out. So my fourth album was actually my first album to not crack the top 10. I, I just didn't feel like it was promoted right. The single, the album, any of it. I, didn't feel, I felt like it was thrown together and just thrown out there and just pushed with no pushing. And so after that project, personally, me, I was just, um, I just wasn't even into music. I just didn't feel like doing nothing. And then eventually I uh, hit Ludacris up and was like, you know, I, I don't really want to be on Disturbing the Peace no more. I'd rather, if I'm a fail, I'd like to be at fault myself. You know what I mean? I, don't, I ain't trying to blame nobody or nothing like that. And plus, it just wasn't really starting to be that much fun to me no more with all of the business stuff was making it too too hard. And so I, I just kind of fell back a little bit. Did you trick him? Did he not know? <laughs> no. I basically told him that, you know, I was transgender. I'm a transgender woman, and I understand if you would like to, you know, you know, wouldn't want to hang with me like that. So you're saying that you had sex with Chingy? <laughs> yes. I remember actually waking up one morning my, my phone went off, it was a part of mine. He was like, man, what's this stuff on social, the internet? We, I ain't know what he was talking about. I'm so clueless. I go upstairs, it was almost like a movie because <laughs> my little sister, my brother, everybody's glued to the um, computer looking at the stuff. I'm like, I'm like, what y'all looking at? Like, I don't know what's going on. It was a show me and Ludacris had, and the promoter had dancers on stage and body paint. So one of, the, one of the girls came up to me in one of the pictures, said they was a fan. And I was like, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, being nice, um, asked them for a picture. I took the picture. And that's what that situation was. That's it. And they came out with a whole, they, they knew me for two years. We had a relationship, all this nonsense. But the thing that I um, disliked most about that when I seen, I seen a lot of radio people interviewing a person without even saying, nah, we gonna get Chingy on the phone. We are gonna see what Chingy got to say about this. It seems as if they wanted it to be true because nobody got in touch with me. And of course, the truth comes to light and this person told you they lied. I am strong enough to admit like, yeah, I was wrong for that shit. But by that time, the sabotaging was already in place. I lost a record deal because that was so huge on the internet, you know? Sometimes people do ignorant stuff for fame and want to, you know, that person apologized and, you know, and I, it is what it is. Before I say this verse, all praises to the most high. Most high. Sitting on the throne, Chingy the king, what I go by. Junior. Jumped off the slave ship to a spaceship, boy, I'm so fly. So fly. Cut your triangle out with my short mind, that's no eyes. When Inspired King Judah, I was going through like a serious inner transformation. And when I say inner transformation, just with knowing myself on the inside and how I work with this whole existence and this universe. And so um, I started getting into a lot of religious readings, like um, the Israelite stuff, the Bible. And so King Judah was based on Israelite teachings. But I think um, when it comes to these religious teachings and everything, and I didn't got so deep into dissecting and researching it, it's esoteric truths with, with secret truths or whatever but it's not it's not so it's not bad at all it's not bad at all it's just you got to know what these things mean and it's very enlightening I like the way you look in them pants yeah you're fine la mama a quarter piece she far from a dime the type of girl that'll get you up and go make you grind who is Chingy today I used to be just this kid who just love music, didn't know much else but music. Now I've gotten into knowing myself on the inside, like I said. So I'm a little more knowledgeable of myself versus I used to be knowledgeable of everybody else, cared about what everybody else wanted. Now it's more about, okay, Chang, what do you want to do? How do you feel about it? So I'm just a grown man. Now. Guess you ain't understand. And now I'm sitting here looking crazy like damn. Um, my overall experience in the music industry, no, it was a great experience. You know, it, 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 taught, it taught me be loyal. 
It taught me to be loyal. I've seen, I've seen a lot of, my, like my next project is called Loyalty and Greed. And those two things explain my previous career from start to finish. Because I witnessed a lot of people being loyal. I witnessed a lot of people being disloyal. I witnessed a lot of people being around me just for the materialistics, the fame, the name, the excitement, and all of that. One thing I would have done differently is not got that lawyer. You know, that happened because of the decisions that were made. If those decisions weren't made, that would have went a totally different way. I dropped 200,000 on that new bag, new bag. Just like that, just like that, just like that. Musically, what fans can expect from me today, I'm the same. I'm, I'm still the same Chingy. You know, I like to make party music still. I make music with a little more substance as well um, by what I've been through, what I'm going through, what I'm trying to go through. Off this new project I got coming out, his first single was titled Just Like That, produced by DJ Snow, my, my tour DJ and friend of mine. And um, yeah, so Just Like That, that's the first single. It was, from, from the start, it was all about music with me. So that's not gonna change. So if my legacy got, gotta be like, oh, the guy who said, you talking about the guy that said right there? If that's got to be my legacy, then let it be. You know, it, I just want to be known to make good, original, authentic, classic, feel-good music. And that's all I ever wanted. Just like that, just yeah. Like that. Yeah, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Chingy. And make sure you subscribe to BT's YouTube channel. The link right here.